Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is the 27th tutorial in this course and in this tutorial we'll be continuing our discussion on forms and we're going to check out some more uh, form elements, right? So uh, this is the form that we're going to prepare and uh, we uh, know how to have the first name field, the last name field and the gender field. In the last tutorial we built the form till here and the uh, rest of the fields that you see 1, 2, 3, 4, five six and also the submit your form uh, button here you know all these uh, things uh, how are we going to do that we're going to check out in this tutorial so uh, this is the html file and uh, till line number 14 i'm sure you guys are familiar with the 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 text till line number 14 because this is something we covered in the last tutorial on line number 15 i have to break tags and then on line number 16 i have uh, the text year of birth a colon and then the select tag so this is going to result into this effect you know, year of birth, there are five values people can choose from and there's this uh, drop down icon here. If I click on it, I'm presented with five values and I can choose one of the five. So if I select 1991, then that will be displayed here. If I select 1994, that will be displayed. And this is something that is used fairly often. You must have uh, seen it on several websites uh, wherein you have to create your account. Um, on Facebook, Gmail, I'm sure, you know, at all these places, they ask you for your year of birth. And, uh, you know, there is a list of, I don't know, you know, 60, 70 years between 1960 and then uh, 2010, or maybe, you know, 1930, 1940. So it starts from there. And uh, to have each uh, value in this uh, select list, you need to use uh, option tag. So let's first uh, check out the parent tag here, which is select. Right, so you're not using the input tag here, you're using the select element, you type in select, and then obviously you have to give a name to this uh, this field, and I've given the name here, and I've used the name attribute. So just as we did with the input element, I have used the name attribute with the select element this time, and I've given it the name here. And then to have, uh, you know, each value, like 90, 90, or 91, 92, 93, and 94, you have to use uh, the option tag, right? So you type an option between less than and greater than symbol, and you have to give uh, a value for uh, each, uh, you know, value that you've displayed in your list. So here it's simple, you know, because it's year of birth, so you can give the same value to uh, each, uh, each text value that's uh, displayed in the select list. So for 1990, I have uh, the value 1990 for the first option, then I have 91 for the second option, 92 for the third, 93 for the fourth, and 94 for the fifth. And you also have to close your option tag the traditional way by using slash option after the text, right? So if you change the text here, like if you change the text 1990 to 95, then this text would appear in the drop down list and you know, uh, if you let it be 1990 here, then even if someone selects 95 from the drop down list, the value that's actually going to be uh, retrieved uh, is 1990, right? I hope that makes some sense. And uh, then I have two more break tags on line number 23. And then on line number 24, I have uh, another simple text box. And this is similar to the first name or the last name field that we have in this form. So choose a username, input tag, and then the type for it is text, the name is username. I have two more break tags on line number 25 and then I've asked the user to choose a password. So choose a password and then I've used the input tag again, but this time the type for it is password, it's not text. So although it, uh, you know, it is similar to um, the username field or the first name or last name fields, it is different in the sense that if you type in a username in the username field, let's say I type in M-A-D-H-U-R, you can see the text, but uh, if you select your type for the input tag as password, whatever text you type in, you know, you can't see the text. You see uh, bold, uh, you know, whatever these uh, hidden characters are, right? So this is the significance of using the password type for the input tag. And uh, then again, you have to give a name to your field and I've given it the name password, I've closed the tag and then two more break tags. And then on line number 28, I have, uh, you know, the uh, element text area. 
and the significance of this is if you're asking for something that can be long like you know some people ask you to upload your resume and some people also ask you to copy the text that you have in your cv and just paste it so you know cvs are generally long or if you're writing about your hobbies or you know what you're interested in or you know if you're just writing about yourself then you actually need larger areas to express yourself so in in those cases you use the uh, text uh, the you know what do you call text area element and uh, between the opening and closing uh, angular brackets you type in text area and then of course you have to give a name to this field too so i've given it the name goals because i've asked for what are your goals in life that's the question and uh, then you have to close this so you can immediately open it and close it and uh, you know you can also drag it expand it and you know make it small or large and this is i guess the smallest size and uh, you know you can make it as big as you want you know for your convenience and uh, the next field that i have is uh, a field that has uh, check boxes so again you know i told you a bit about this in the last tutorial when we were talking about radio buttons i told you that uh, using radio buttons you can sort of force that people select only one value for a field uh, the beauty of using check boxes is that you can select multiple values so let's say you the question here is how would you want to contact uh, how would you want to be contacted you know how would you want us to contact you and there are three options here phone email sms so let's say you want to be contacted through phone and sms you can select these two and you can not select email and uh, on the other hand if you want to be contacted through all three then you can select email too and you can you know check any combination so the way you have this in your web page is by using the type checkbox with the input element so you type in input and then you give the type checkbox, you know, the value checkbox to the type attribute. And uh, you have to use the same name as we, uh, you know, did with the gender field here. And uh, the name for all the three values, phone, email, and SMS is contact. And the values are different. So the value for phone uh, is phone, the value for email is email, and the value for uh, SMS is SMS. Right, I hope this makes sense line number 34 i have two more break tags on line number 35 i have uh, this button that uh, you know will ask you to select a picture and uh, you know it says choose a file so when i click on it you know i am presented with this so i can browse and i can select uh, a picture that i want to upload or any file right so this is how you get it uh, I first have the text upload your latest picture a colon and then I've used the input element again here but this time I have used the value file for the type attribute right so we've seen different values that you can give to the type attribute with the input element we've used a checkbox value we've used the radio value we've used a text value the password value and now we're checking out the file value here and uh, again I have given a name to this field too I've given it the name image and uh, you know this is uh, we've seen how it looks like and then on line number 37 finally i have the submit button for the form and uh, when you click on the submit button like right now i haven't used any programming language uh, at the back end so you know the values are not going to a database but usually you have uh, some kind of programming interface that takes the values that users provide and stores the values in databases but Right now, I, ha I don't have any such thing going, so the submit your form button is not going to do anything. But uh, if you have such a uh, provision, then when you click on the submit your form button, you know the, the values are sort of stored in the database. And uh, the way you have it in your uh, web page is by using the submit value for the type attribute with the input tag. Right, so you type in input, give the value submit to the type attribute, and I've given the name submit to the field, and uh, the value is submit your form, and this is what you will see on the button. So if you'll change this text here, if you'll change it, if you'll change it to, you know, just submit with an exclamation. I'll save the file, go to Google Chrome, refresh it. You'll just see submit here, right? so that's it that's all about forms and i guess we've covered up 
pretty much everything about forms in the last two tutorials this one and the last one that is and uh, i hope you guys had fun and you may subscribe to my channel if you haven't already if you have any kind of quiz then you can ask me you can comment on the video or you can send me messages and i'll be glad to answer your doubts and uh, i'll see you guys in the next video and uh, thank you so much for watching this one and uh, take care